This 32-year-old female patient has an intumescent cataract in her right eye with a very high intralenticular pressure. The central bulge of the anterior capsule is very clearly seen. She had earlier undergone past planar vitrectomy plus silicon oil injection a couple of years ago. Rexis is expected to be a big challenge in patients like this and in this video we are going to demonstrate how to effectively surmount the challenge using a two-stage Rexis strategy. Pre-op IV mannitol was not used in this patient. However, I routinely use 20% IV mannitol preoperatively for white swollen cataracts with shallow anterior chamber in non-vitrectomized eyes. IV mannitol is known to dehydrate the vitreous and a few colleagues feel even the swollen lens. Two paracentesis incisions were created with the MVR blade. BSS is injected into the anterior chamber to firm up the eye. Subsequently, anterior chamber is entered with the keratome from the temporal approach, taking care not to traumatize the anterior capsule. Anterior capsule is stained with 0.06% ripen blue under air bubble because visibility is paramount during rexis in such challenging cases. A modified soft shell strategy is planned wherein first a dispersive OVD, viscoat, is injected into the anterior chamber. The anterior capsule is then flattened with Helon 5, injected just in front of the capsule. It is important to render the anterior capsule flat or even concave for a safe rexus. 26 gauge cystitome is used to puncture the central anterior capsule and raise a flap which is gently turned around as we plan for a preliminary small rexus. Helon 5 is repeatedly injected peripheral and central to developing capsular flap to provide a deep anterior chamber. Since the cystitome doesn't offer much control over the flap, we decided to continue rest of the rexus with micro rexus forceps. Due to ergonomic issues, we chose to continue the rexis not through the inferior paracentesis but through the main incision during the initial stages. Once the tear moved towards the superior half, the inferior paracentesis was used for further manipulations. The flap was carefully and slowly torn to give a continuous rexus. Though there was a minor hiccup at some point due to the two radial capsular tears occurring during capsular puncture with the cystitone, it was successfully managed. At this point, what we want is a continuous rexus regardless of its size and shape. The surgeon should have full control on how the tear progresses. Helon 5 is burped out of the incision to facilitate decompression of the capsular bag. Irrigation cannula is passed into the bag to flush out the flaky lens matter and it is necessary to burp the OVD out of the chamber. Care should be taken not to laterally stretch the rex's margins which may tear 
particularly if the primary rexus is very small. Prior to making a definitive rexus, the anterior chamber is filled with sodium hyaluronidate 1.4%. The rexus margin is nicked with the micro rexus scissors. With the help of micro rexus forceps, a definitive rexus of the desired size is accomplished. It may be necessary to maneuver the instrument from the side port as well as the main incision till a complete rexus is obtained. Having achieved a two-stage rexus, removal of lens matter can now progress in a safe manner. Though rexus is challenging in white swollen cataracts, a proper strategy makes it quite safe and efficient. The anterior capsule should be stained with tripe and blue. Preoperative IV mannitol, especially in patients with shallow anterior chamber. Use of Helon 5 to flatten the anterior capsule. Use of a two-stage rexus technique definitely helps. Micro forceps and scissors are very helpful to work through the side port incisions. <laughs>